Hi guys, Happy New Year. I hope everybody had a great celebration with their families. It is now 2021 and I am hoping that this year is going to be a better one for all of us. Anyways, for today's video, I have with me some of the house plants that I have growing in water. So I wanted to show you the root system as well as talk about some of the common questions that I often get asked in the previous video on this topic. So let's get started. And the first house plant that I have here is the Monstera Deliciosa. So I've had this one growing in water for four months now. Before this, I had it actually growing in soil. But the reason why I transferred it into water is because when it was growing in soil, it was suffering from root rot. And it has been four months, so the roots have really established themselves already. I'm very happy with the growth of this and there is no more root rot, although it did take a while for all of um, the root rot to stop and that's I think because I was afraid to cut off all of the roots. So the best thing to do is if you are trying to transfer a house plant from water uh, from soil to water because it's suffering from root rot or from some disease is actually just to cut off all of the old roots or all of the old soil roots before placing it into water. So anyways, this is the root system now. It's very healthy. You can see that most of the roots are white or a very light green color. And Monstera does have a quite thick root system. So yeah, this is where I cut off the old, uh, old soil roots. And then this one also had a little bit of the soil roots growing on it, but I cut off most of them. And then all of these are now water roots. So a uh, question that I get asked often about this Monstera plant is how much should I fill up the water level or how high should the water level be in this container? So for me, what I do is I just try to make sure that the water level is enough to cover all of the roots and not anything higher. Actually, you could put it a little bit higher, but I'm kind of scared. The reason why I'm scared is because this plant did suffer from root rot and um, I don't want it too high to the point that uh, if everything is touching water, I'm afraid that the stem might also start to rot. Although I don't think that is always the case in the Monstera. I'm just being very, very careful in this case. I also have this stem portion or where it, or the original node where it was cut. I have it uh, propped up against a bunch of pebbles, which I put into the water and that just keeps it dry for most of the time. So I just want to make sure that the roots are the ones that is in water while the uh, the node or the stem portion is the one that is propped up a little bit higher. The next question that people often ask me is how often do you fertilize the houseplant or how often do you fertilize your Monstera? Actually for this guy, I've not fertilized him and the reason that I don't want to fertilize him just yet is because I want the roots to really establish themselves. So what I found is that fertilizer can actually hurt your houseplant, especially in the beginning stages or when it's just starting to form water roots. What you can do if you really want to add something to your water is try Super Thrive. So I've not tried Super Thrive, but I've read a lot of reviews and um, I've seen that a lot of people are very successful using this. It's not fertilizer per se, it's actually just vitamins that will help establish the root system and help it grow a little bit faster. The other thing that I do add to this water is hydrogen peroxide. The reason why I have hydrogen peroxide in here is actually to stop it from root rotting as well as add a little bit of oxygen to the water. It also helps maintain the cleanliness of the water. At least I find that it does so. So I um, put in hydrogen peroxide every time I change out the water. Usually I will only use like one or two drops of hydrogen peroxide and I find that's perfectly fine for uh, the amount of water that I have in here. 
So the next question is, of course, how often do you, you change out the water? Actually, I don't have much of a schedule for when I change out the water of this. Whenever I see that it looks a little bit murky or I feel like I have time to change out the water, then I will go ahead and change it out. Sometimes the water level actually drops really, really low. And then I remember, oh yeah, I forgot to change the water. That's the only time that I will top up and um, add in new water. So I would say that it's probably every two to three weeks. In the beginning, you wanna change it out a little bit more often than that, I'd say once a week or so. And um, just because fresh water provides oxygen to the houseplant, but once the roots are established like this, you can go ahead and change it out every month or so, or whenever the water is murky. So the next question that everybody asks is what type of water do you use? So for me, I just use regular tap water, let it sit out for 24 hours and yeah, that's what I put into most of my houseplants. If you can collect rainwater, that's definitely the best, but I am a little bit more practical so I just get regular tap water, let it sit out for 24 hours and then use that instead for all of my houseplants. After the Monstera, I'd say one of the easiest plants to grow in water is the Pothos and I talk about this plant all the time but there are actually different varieties of Pothos so if you don't want just the boring green jade Pothos you can also go for something with a little bit of variegation and this one is called Enjoy and it is also part of the Pothos family it is also really really easy to take care of and yeah you just propagate it in the exact same way as you would a regular green pothos and I really love this because it is a low light house plant as well so you can just put a few stems in water and then just put it into an area that uh, doesn't necessarily get a whole lot of light and this one is super super pretty I really love the way that this one is growing it is a relatively fast grower so if you want some instant gratification I would say that Pothos is a really nice plant to grow in water. The next one that I have here is actually um, competing with my Pothos. This is my Mykins and Mykins can grow in water. This one has really nice velvety leaves. But the thing about Mykins is I actually prefer to grow it in sphagnum moss. And the reason for that is because Mykins have this very, very delicate root system. It is a really thin root system and I find that uh, even though Mykins do extremely well in water, I prefer to grow it in sphagnum moss because sphagnum moss gives it something more to cling onto and it just allows your plant to cascade and to grow really nicely. So the one that I have growing downstairs has a layer of sphagnum moss on the top part and then on the bottom part is growing in leka. And you can actually just go ahead and water it exactly the same as you would a water plant. Fill it up with water and then wait for the water level to go down before you uh, put in any more water. So the Mykins are a very beautiful trailing house plant that can grow in water and they also do have like aerial roots so basically in order to propagate them all you have to do is take a few stem cuttings put it into water and they will eventually grow out water roots as well they are very slow in the beginning like when they are trying to establish themselves in water or in sphagnum moss so you won't see a lot of growth but the moment that they start growing they really really shoot out very very quickly so I think like um, this one is all new growth right here and it took a very very long time so I've had this guy in water for about four months also and I remember in the first like two months it really wasn't growing I wasn't sure what what I was doing wrong and then all of a sudden it just started growing like no tomorrow and it just started trailing really really nicely so yeah once it establishes itself I think a new leaf will form almost every three days or so and yeah it just keeps growing and growing and growing so you might have to prune it as well from time to time the next 
plant that I have growing in water is the Wandering Jew and I actually have two varieties so this one is the purple one and then I also have the green one right here so this is also a trailing house plant right now it's a kind of like going all over the place and it is a relatively fast grower the only thing that I will say though is I don't exactly like the way the roots look it kind of looks long and mushy so um, I'm thinking of transferring this out into Leka or into a container where you don't actually see the roots. I was thinking at first that maybe I am doing something wrong and that's the reason why the roots look like this but apparently that's really how the water roots look like and yeah this plant grows really really fast so ever since I've had this guy in water I've had him in water for about three weeks now and he has grown about two inches on every single stem like it's growing like two or three uh, two or three new nodes and you propagate this basically in the same way as the other house plants just take off um, a stem cutting place it into water and it will start to grow in new leaves and new roots from the node area so this is the wandering Jew different varieties very very fast grower as well and for light requirements it will need bright indirect sunlight so this one is kind of losing its color I have a feeling it's because it's not getting enough sunlight so you want to make sure that especially if it is this purple variety or the pink one which is really really pretty that you give it a lot of bright indirect sunlight so that it will maintain its color the next house plant that I have growing in water is one of my favorites and this is the Sansevieria or the snake plant. So this is a very low maintenance plant. I really love the fact that you can grow it in low light or you can grow it in direct light. It seems to be okay with like any sort of light situation but it does take a little bit of time to establish itself and then I also found that um, when I am trying to propagate this sometimes what will happen is there will be no roots growing and then the bottom part will actually start to get mushy which means that you have to cut it and then just try again so this one has uh, been growing here for about four months also and yeah it's growing a nice set of roots this one is growing a little bit slower as compared to this one so uh, the one that I have here actually already has pups growing at the side and pups is just like new leaves so it will grow from the side right here and then it will grow straight up as well and you can leave this guy growing in water it doesn't also need a lot of fertilizer I've never fertilized this one um, you could probably put in fertilizer after a year or so in a very small dosage and yeah I think it's just a very very nice beautiful low maintenance house plant that can grow in water the next house plant that I have is this anthurium and this one kind of looks really really sad but anyways uh, I made a mistake on my previous video I called this a peace lily but actually peace lily can also grow completely in water I just don't have a sample of that this one is an anthurium and it does need actually some uh, fertilizer in order for it to bloom or for like the space to start to grow this one I've never put in any fertilizer I've had it growing in water for a really long time now I've had it for almost um, eight months not put in any fertilizer it's surviving but it's not doing extremely well and I think the reason for that is because I don't give it enough sunlight so most house plants like bright indirect sunlight unfortunately I don't have enough windows window space for all of the house plants that do need bright indirect sunlight this one is a little bit farther away in the middle of the room but anyways it is hanging in there and it can definitely grow in water this one I actually just propagated it by taking um, a stem cutting and then placing it into water 
Another house plant that grows really, really well in water is the aglaonema. And I just thought of this because it actually, you propagate it in exactly the same way as you would propagate the anthurium, which is to take a stem cutting. So what you want to do is when you look at the mother plant, look for the lowest area that you can cut and then just take a cutting from there. So the roots will start to grow in about um, two weeks time. The aglaonema does take a little bit more time to establish a root system. I've had this one in water I think for about um, one and a half months now and it's not a re it's not really a fast grower. If you want it to grow a little bit faster you could put it in like bright indirect sunlight. This one is in medium light and not growing quite as fast as it should but of course um, limited space so that's why I put it a little bit further back from the window. So anyways, I really like the aglaonema because it comes in so many different types of varieties. This one is called the Red Siam, if I'm not mistaken, and it's native to Thailand. So this one has a little bit of red and pink on the leaves. There is also one that I featured in my previous video, which is called the Silver Bay. And that one has um, like green and then lighter green leaves as well. So a lot of them have really beautiful variegations. And that's why Aglaonema is definitely on my list of houseplants to grow in water. The last houseplant that I will be sharing in today's video is my Alakasha. And the Alakasha is a little different from all the previous houseplants in that it actually grows from a bulb. So you will need like this bulb area in order to grow it. This one originally was growing in soil, but I thought it was dead. Actually, I really thought I had killed the plant. And what I did is I dug up of the bulb area this one and then i just placed it into water as a last resort and luckily it started to grow water roots so it shed off all of its old soil roots i had to wash those off and then all came in all of these new water roots so this one has been in water for um, approximately three months now. It has grown a really, really nice root system as well. And yeah, I'm very, very happy that it survived. The thing though about alocasias, and this is just one um, variety of alocasia, so this one is called um, Mickey Mouse in common language, but I will put the scientific name down here. The thing about alakashas though is that depending on the size of the bulb, it can only hold a certain number of leaves before uh, the leaves start to die out. So usually alakashas are not the type of plant that will really grow into a very bushy plant, something like the pothos. They uh, usually will only grow two or three leaves at a time up until the bulb is like very much established or very much larger than this in that it can support more leaves. So what you'll see is the moment that a new leaf starts to grow, the old leaf starts to die. I'm lucky this time that both of the leaves are okay, but in the beginning when I was growing this plant, it could only support one leaf. So every time a new leaf would grow, the old leaf would die down right away. This time it has two leaves and very, very happy, but I'm sure the moment that I start to see a third leaf start to grow, it's going to, um, one of these leaves will start dying. The older leaf will start dying. So there's nothing wrong with your house plant, um, especially Especially if you do have this growing in water it's just really that's the way that it grows at first I thought I was doing something wrong but apparently that's really the nature of the alakasha so this one is really really cute and pretty it did actually grow a little bit smaller I mean a lot smaller because before my leaves were like the size of my hand but now since I've transferred it into water and since it did shed off all of its roots it's just growing very small leaves but every new leaf that grows is going to be a little bit bigger so yeah I'm very very happy that I was able to get this to grow in water and it seems to really really like a water environment as well 
So guys, that is it for this video. I hope I did answer most of your questions on growing houseplants in water. If you have other questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. If you aren't already, please consider subscribing to my channel by pressing the subscribe button. And I will also include my playlist on other houseplants because I do talk about a lot of topics on this channel. Anyways guys, please do have a great new year and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye!